Hello everybody. Today in this video we're going to learn about solving proportions. We're going to start with the multiplication property of equality. It's a property we've been using for a couple years now, a few years. Um, here we have x over 7 equals 3 fifths. Um, we need to isolate the x value, so we need to get rid of this division by 7. We can do that using the multiplication property of equality by multiplying both sides by 7. And the results of that, um, the 7s go away here, and we're left with x equals 21 over 5. Which, you could do the division, come up with a decimal, but leaving this as a fraction is totally acceptable. Make sure, as always, for the rest of your life, that if this is reducible, that you do reduce it. Uh, but for this case, it's done. Now let's go on to this green one here. Um, so again, we want to isolate the m. We can use the multiplication property of equality. Uh, so we're going to multiply both sides by 12. Uh, the results of that are that we get rid of these 12s. And we're left with m by itself here equals uh, whatever 12 times 7 is. I think it's, what, 84? Um, actually, before I do that multiplication, I only want to reduce just to make this easier. So 12 and 8 reduce to 3 and 2, I believe. Because right? 4 times 2, 4 times 3. And that'll make our multiplication a lot easier. So 3 times 7 is 21 over 2. Okay. And then since we're solving for m, let's go ahead and put that on the left side. So let's say m equals 21 over 2. Okay. Um, so now I want to talk about cross products. As you can see, all these fractions are equal. 1 half is equal to 2 fourths, 2 thirds is 8 twelfths, and 4 tenths is the same as 6 fifteenths. Um, so cross products, which we've talked about in the past, you can multiply whenever two fractions are equal or whenever we have a proportion, right? A proportion is when two fractions are equal to each other. Um, the cross products are, will always be equal. So you can see that 4 times 1 is equal to 2 times 2. And this one, 2 times 12 should be equal to which is 24, right? Should be equal to 8 times 3, which is also 24. And in the final one, we have 10 and 6 multiplied together should be equal to 4 times 15. So 15 times 4, which is 60, is going to be equal to 10 times 6, which is 60. So whenever you have a proportion, the cross products are going to be equal. Those are also called the means and the extremes, although at this point, I forget which one is which. All right, um, so how do we use cross products when there's a variable? Well, it's going to be done the exact same way. Uh, we're going to multiply diagonally here, and then they're going to be equal to each other. So um, we're going to get 13 times 3, whatever that is, is going to be equal to 8v. Um, so 13 times 3 is 39. So we have 39 equals 8v. And then we're going to use the division property of equality to divide by 8 to isolate that v. Uh, so we're going to end up with, I'll just go over here. So we're going to end up with 39 over 8, which is not reducible, is equal to v. And we'll just switch it around here. v equals 39 over 8. All right, let's do the blue one. Um, as you can see, if we're using the multiplication property of equality, we're going to have to do a couple moves here because the t is on the bottom, which is not OK. Um, but with the cross products, it's still just the same amount as above. Uh, so we're going to see 2 times t is going to be equal to 6 times negative 5, which um, I could right now do 6 times negative 5. However, I know here when I divide by 2, I can use, I can reduce first. So, so we have t here, and then the 6 and the 2 are going to reduce to give us a 3. So I know that t is going to be equal to 3 times negative 5. So we get negative 15. 
Right, let's make it a tad more challenging. Um, here in this proportion, we have two terms on the bottom of one of the fractions. So we need to, we're still going to use cross products here. Still a handy tool. Um, so we're going to do 7 times 8 and 5 times. Now, we have to remember that the 5 has to be multiplied not just to the 2 here or the negative 2, but the whole thing. So we have to make sure to use parentheses. Oops, I didn't mean to write 5 there. It's a K, right? Uh, so we have K minus 2. All right, so make sure you do put parentheses there so we know to use the distributive property. Um, so we're going to end up with uh, 56 equals 5K minus 10. Now we're using properties of equality again uh, to isolate K. So we're going to get 66 equals 5K, and then we're going to divide by 5, and we end up with... Um, I'm going to switch it around so the k is on the left. So k uh, is going to be equal to 66 fifths. Again, that's not reducible. And finally, the most challenging one, we have a binomial on both sides of the proportion, which doesn't really change much. We're still going to do it the same way, cross products. Uh, we're going to use the distributive property, properties of equality, same stuff. So the 7 needs to be multiplied to both these items with the distributive property and the 5 needs to be multiplied to both of these items here terms is what they're called <clears throat> so using the distributive property on the left side I'm gonna get 7q plus 14 uh, distributive property on the right side 10q minus 55 now we're gonna combine the like terms uh, remember we're always combining the like terms with addition subtraction so don't try to do any division of Q here, because that would get nasty. Um, so why don't we start by dealing with the variables. So we're going to subtract 7Q from both sides, ending up with 14 equals 3Q minus 55. Uh, we're going to add 55 to both sides. And let me move that down a little bit. So we're going to get... Uh, what is that? 69 equals 3q, and that is going to be divisible or reducible at the very least. And let's extend that. Okay, so we're going to end up with q over there, and then uh, let's see, 23. That's right, and let's switch it around. q equals 23. And uh, let's see if it's easy to check our answer here. We haven't really talked about that. Um, as we've been going along because we've been ending up with some nasty fractions, which you can still check your answer, but it's quite a bit more time consuming. This might be a little easier. Let's figure it out. So if we think Q is 23, then we get 25 over 5. So this side is 5. And here we get 46 minus 11 is 35 divided by 7 is also 5. So again, when your answers are whole numbers, like 23, um, it's often quite easy to check to our answer mentally to see if we've done it correctly. And we can be pretty confident. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.